Last couple of weeks, we went back into the Old Testament, looked at the children of Israel, and they had the opportunity to go spy out the land. Remember? Spy out the land, send 12 leaders, one of every tribe. Ten came back and said, we can't. Remember? Yes or no? Can't do it! You'll always have whiners, and I'll always outnumber usually the winners in life. That's what's going to happen. Did you hear me? Don't be surprised in church as well if that's the same number. Excuse me. Okay? I hate it. Sometimes you can't help it. I mean, you just the way it is. But if you're, if you're struggling, sometimes you want to get encouragement from maybe a believer. Sometimes they'll get you down. Are y'all listening to me or not? That's a little ugly for me to say that right out of the gate. But just because somebody comes to church doesn't mean they're a winner. Did you listen to me or not? Okay? So, but we want you to be a winner. We want you not to whine. We want you to, no matter what's happened in your life, if you don't believe you can, you ain't. If you don't have faith in you and faith in the Lord, certainly faith in the Lord, but He believes in you also, you're not going to make it. Okay? So what happened to the children of Israel? They thought they were grasshoppers. We were in our own sights as grasshoppers, and they what? They were. And they were also as grasshoppers in their enemy's sight. You let the enemy ever think you're a grasshopper, he'll step on you. You hear me now? <laughs> Come on. That's what happened. So they didn't inherit the land, and it really ticked God off. God was so angry because it made him look like he's unholy, made him look like he's a liar, made him look like he was weak. And God is strong. And so he forbid them from going into the land. Matter of fact, all of them died except the little ones, remember? The younger ones. He said, no, they can go because they're not like you adults over here who are making these decisions that say, I can't, I can't, I can't. So I put my judgment on you. But two thought they could. That was Joshua and Caleb. We talked a good bit about Caleb. But what about Joshua? Moses said, I don't even get to go in. Remember? Yes or no? I don't even get to go in. It was also because of what he did at the uh, brook. Lost his cool. Lost his temper. But it was also because of the people's lack of faith. That was on him too. You know? And so he didn't get to go in. But he said, now you be with Joshua. You encourage Joshua because he is going. You be an encouragement to him. That's what he told the folk. Okay? So let's pick it up in this last message today. Here we go. Last week was a defining faith. A defining faith. If you see yourself as nothing, your enemy, and I'm not talking about just people, guys. I'm talking about the devil will see you as nothing. Okay? Your faith will define you. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Y'all with me so far? Okay, so last week was a defining faith. Today, say that with me, a what? A courageous faith. A courageous faith. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That doesn't mean kooky stuff. It means basically I can, I can live life regardless of what's happened to me. I can still have faith. They're reporting now on the news. I haven't seen a lot of it, but I hear a little bit of it. But, but with this another terror group, ISIS, out there, they're going into various homes of believers now. And if people aren't renouncing their faith and turning to Islam, Mohammed, they're being executed. And there's reports now how many are not turning from Jesus. Some are. I don't know. Maybe if you did the math, it'd be ten do and two don't. I don't know. Did you hear me? But the bottom line is, aren't you glad you live in America? Can we thank the Lord again we live in America? Come on. Come on. You think when we complain about our country and how bad we got it, you think God just wants to step on us sometimes? Say. Doesn't mean we don't pray. Doesn't mean we can't do better. Here's how I pray. Lord, help us be the best we can be right here in Englewood. That's how I pray. You know, because America's so big. It looks overwhelming. How can you make a difference? You can make a difference by starting right here. How about that? How about start at your house? Get your address and you put it up. This is where I'm going to start right here in America. Start working on my home right here. Amen? And then just move out. But courageous faith. A lot of people have to have it in ways we don't, but we still have to have courageous faith. Let's go to the story now. Let's see what we can get out of it. God wants me to what? And not to be what? God's not your enemy. If God be with us, who can be what? Against us. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the... It's all through the Bible. 
Okay, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the what? Work of the Lord. Okay? So, God wants me to be a conqueror. God wants me to overcome, not to be what? And guys, this doesn't mean we walk around like bullies. That's not what this is talking about. God knows how hard life is. God knows that it's tough down here. God knows how people can turn on one another. You know what I'm saying? God knows what we can do to our own self. And we're our worst enemy. The choices we make. But that's not God's will for our life. God wants us to be an overcomer, not to be overcome. You've got to believe that. Keep looking. God wants me to be a what? Not a what? It's fun telling your sad story and me telling my sad story to people. Get them to whine and cry with us. But God says that's no way to live a victorious life. Think on these things. What sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are lovely? If there be any virtue, if it's a good report, the Bible says think on these things. Does it say that in Philippians 4? It does. Don't get caught in this. This is not God's will for your life. God wants me to be a what? And not a? I know, that's tough preaching. You say, oh my gosh, I don't get to whine. No, you don't. Boy, has anybody ever whined more than me. Right? Look at you saying that's right. Hush your mouth over there. <laughs> Chatting on the barge over there. Yes, right. Hush up. <laughs> Come on. Let's go to the book of Joshua. Let's see what happens. It's just really interesting. I want to just look at the first chapter this morning. We won't look at it all. The book of Joshua will go fly now, Raj. It's a picture of a conqueror. It's about taking possession of God's what? Why don't you and me take possession of God's promises? Why don't we do that? If there's a promise, and there's many of them in the Word of God, why don't we take possession of those for us personally? See, I can't do that for you, and you can't do it for me. It's about that, though. It's about the process of what? And what? It's about believing and then doing. James says, faith without what is dead. Works is dead. Doesn't mean works is going to take you to heaven, but don't expect you to have all this great faith and not do nothing. That's insanity. Well, I believe, I believe, I believe, but I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. I'm a failure. You don't believe. Because faith without what is dead. It's just something you're making up, dude. I got all this faith, but I can't do a dime's worth of nothing in my life. Now, that's not true. That's, that's absolutely false. If you have faith, you have what it takes to work. Amen? The Bible even says work out your own salvation, doesn't it, with fear and trembling. That's not necessarily talking about going to heaven right there. It's talking about when your butt's in a sling, excuse me, and you're going down for the count, you get out there and you work it out. <laughs> with fear and trembling. Amen? You're hearing me. So, that's what this book's talking about. It's about God's power being what? In who? We talk about the power of God. The power. What is the power? You know what the power of God is? Hey, lightning, you see that? <laughs> the power of God. Power, God's power is all around us. And you can look at that till the cows come home, but what he really is up for you and me to do is his power to be worked out in our life. That's where the power is. He wants to work through us the hope of glory. He wants to be in our life to help us overcome, to help us win. To help us to be that victor in our life. You're getting it where we're headed this morning? So the book of Joshua is about being a what? See, you said that loud. A, a, a conqueror. That's what God wants for me. And guys, be honest with you. That's why I do messages like this. They're for me. I need this. I need this. And without whining... Uh, I've taken on a lot in my life. Not just with the church. Pastoring, that can be a lot. I'm not whining. It sort of sounded like though, didn't it? <laughs> but just because I've taken on a lot doesn't mean I can't do it. To be married and have two little small young'uns again, that's a lot. Some probably think, well, that's a lot. Well, it is a lot. But can it be done? And can we do it happily and successfully and wonderfully? Sure we can. Why can't we say? You listening? 
Come on. So that's what we're talking about a little bit today. But Joshua is this man's name. We didn't spend a lot of time on him, though, in the last couple of weeks. We talked more about Caleb. But I want you to listen to this. Hang in here with me. Forty years before the beginning of the book of Joshua, Joshua's almost what? He was almost stoned to death. And I didn't talk about that. He almost didn't make it. He almost didn't make it. I want you to see what happened. When Caleb and Joshua said, we can do this, I didn't tell you they, they wanted them dead. They wanted to kill them. They rose up to kill them. Don't be surprised if some whiners or some people wanting to be the victim will rise up and kill you. You hear me? All they did was say, we can do it! We can do it! Uh-uh, we're going to kill you. I know I'm getting off a little track here, but I mean, sometimes well-meaning people in our life, they, they're telling us the wrong thing. They're telling us the wrong thing, the thing that's going to kill us. You listening? We need people telling us we can. I need people telling me I can get out of my hole if I'm in a hole. Amen, say. Not telling me or throwing dirt on me. Come on. They tried to kill these guys for being strong. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, when they heard the people saying we can't do it and God, you know, God, we're better off in Egypt, they took their clothes, Caleb and Joshua, they just took their clothes, their own clothes and just tore them in two. Can't believe you guys are talking like crazy people. And they spoke unto the company of the children of Israel saying, the land which we passed through to search it is exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then He will bring us into this land. And he will give it to us. And it's a land which flows with milk and honey. We saw it with our own eyes. Only say this with me. Only what? Only rebel not against the Lord. And neither what? Fear the people. Don't rebel against God and don't fear people. Don't rebel against God and don't fear people. Can we say that? Don't rebel against God and don't fear. Say it one more time. Don't rebel against God and don't fear don't fear, buddy. For they are bread for us. Oh, I love that. Curry, you need to get that down. They're bread for us. You know what that means? We'll eat their lunch. That's where that saying come from, probably. They're bread for us. Their defense has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Don't fear them. That's what Joshua and Caleb said. Now watch what happened 40 years earlier. This is 40 years from the book of Joshua. Back it up. But all the congregation did what? Said, let's stone them with what? For thinking they can. For thinking we can. I struggle with that sometimes myself. I look at that building down there that we're building. And sometimes in my lack of faith, I get depressed. Why? Why? Did I make a commitment to do that? Because I can. Because we can. Is that right? That's what I need to be saying. That's what I do. I have to get myself and I have to slap myself. And Dina, you do it, don't you? And Kim, you do it, don't you? And Elise, you definitely do it, don't you? As far as slap me. Don't get people in your life that's going to whine with you. Get people in your life that's going to slap you. Amen. Say Come on. So that's what they were going to do. They were going to stone them and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle before all the children of Israel said, now that ain't happening. I'm with these boys and you can't do a thing about them. Isn't that good news? Say, if God be with us, who can be against us? Amen. So let's go now quickly. So only Joshua and Caleb believed that they were what? Say it again. To proceed and take possession of the land and that God promised to Israel. And he's going to push us. But they were outvoted by the other ten spies. We saw that. Nearly killed because of their what? And their what? Amen? And some of you are going to really get what I'm talking about over the last ten minutes because you know what it is to be down, to be in trouble, to be hurting so bad. And, and almost 
to be walked away from because you want to make it. Be walked away from because you want to fight. You want to do what's right. Not everybody wants to do what's right. Are you going to have the faith to keep fighting? You're going to have the faith to keep doing right. So this pleased God, and he withheld his power, and he forbid the taking of the land for how many years? Forty years. And so when you go in your Bible, after that, you come to the book of Joshua. It's 40 years later now. Forty years. Wow! How many hate to wait? <laughs> Forty years. Not at the Holiday Inn or the Hilton. Forty years in the wilderness. And here's the thing, Joshua and Caleb were right. Joshua and Caleb knew they could, but Joshua and Caleb still had to wait. You know what I mean? Can you, remember, can you imagine the whining they must have heard in 40 years? All those people weren't going to get to go in the land. Can you imagine how many people pointed the finger at them? I wonder how many friends Joshua and Caleb had. They had each other, that's about it. And the kids, kids, we can do it. I can see Josh and Caleb with like five-year-olds. We can do it. We can do it. Okay. It's going to happen. You hang in here with me, baby. Come on. Here we go. A courageous faith. How do I have a courageous faith? Well, he was talking to Josh. We'll just look at it real quick. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Say that. One more time. One more time. You are. How are we going to do this, God? You are. I love that. Now, after the death of Moses, oh my gosh, that would have been a bad day. The leader's dead. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, and here's what he told him. Look at it. Moses, my servant, is dead, as if you didn't already know that. Now, therefore, arise. Get up. Well, no, we're having a funeral. Get up. Go over this Jordan. I'll take care of burying Moses. You're fighting, dude. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, unto the land which I do give them, even to all the children of Israel. And so, who's going to do it? You are. You are. Who's going to get out of the mess in your life right now? You are. Let me say something to you. If you're listening to me today in this room or on the radio, and you're trying to get out of your mess by sinning, by screwing around, you have a good time. But I'm going to tell you something right now. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. God will judge you. And what you think is happy right now is going to end up being the destruction in your life. You remember I said that this day. Did you hear me today? Say. Yeah, praise the Lord. We ought to praise the Lord for the right thing, man. Listen. You can do it. But you better do it right. If you're in mess right now, you better do it right. God's not saying you're going to be perfect. But don't pull that line. Come on. Well, what's he going to do? Here's what God says. You will lead the people and you will do what? You're going to take possession of the land. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites unto the great sea, the Mediterranean, to the going down of the sun shall be your what? You're going to get you some beachfront property, Jack. A lot of it. Come on. So who's going to do it? You are. Number three, how's he going to do it? How's he going to do it? I love this. You've got me, God says, and I've got you. Can you say that? You've got and I've got. One more time. You've got me and I've got. I remember Dina years ago. A single mom struggling with two boys to raise them. After coming from an abusive relationship with a former husband in Jersey. And I remember her making it. And I remember her telling women when she would counsel them. Jesus is my husband. Remember that, Dina? Jesus is my husband. I've got Jesus. I got you. You got me. And if you keep doing that, and it took you years, not quite 40, before you got Chuck. 
He's the cherry on her Sunday. Can we praise the Lord? Come on. Many, many, many years. How many had to wait many years in your life before you saw the thing come to pass that you had to believe in? You kept believing. That's what this message is about today. I know we're talking the Bible, which we need to, but I'd like to let's be real at the same time. Amen? You've got me, and I've got you. There shall not any man be able to what? Before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I, I love this verse. I, I quote it. I use it in my life all the time. I will not fail thee. I will not forsake you. I will not fail you, and I will not forsake you. Keep looking. So, we're talking a courageous faith, and Raj is pushing us a little bit. And here's God's promise to a conqueror. I came up with this years ago for my own life, and I shared it with you guys. A little bit different today, but I'll be with you. I'll not fail you. I'll not abandon you. How comforting is that? Say. It's just where, like John 10 talks about, no man can pluck you from my Father's hand. Isn't that beautiful? Say. How many of your life you felt like, maybe it's now, but maybe in the past, you felt like you were just on a free fall, just going, you're, you're, you, just, you were falling. <laughs> it's falling. <sighs> Can't find bottom. Where is it? You ever felt like that? Say. But to know when you're falling, pop it up again one more time. I'll be with you. I'll not fail you. I'll not abandon you. Isn't that a beautiful thing? How many in the room you have enough strength to lift a hand and say, I was abandoned. I know how that feels. You're alive, ain't you, baby? Say. You look like you're still kicking, ain't you, baby? Say. Come on. Praise God. Be strong and of a good courage, Joshua. Be strong and of a good courage. Verse number six, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Be strong and of a good courage. Friend of this people, shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto the fathers to give them. Be strong and of a good courage. Good courage comes. Listen, how do I get good courage, Clark? Good courage comes when I read and believe that believe that what good courage comes when I read and believe that God will do what he says he will do. Say that with me again. Good courage comes when I read and believe that God will what he says he will. If he says he'll, he'll never fail me, if he says he's not going to forsake me, then he ain't. Do we need to talk about that anymore? Be strong and of what? He didn't just say good courage, great courage. Keep looking. Only be thou strong and what? What? Very courageous. You're going to need it. They ain't going to want to give up the land over there. But it's yours. If you keep that faith and that fighting spirit, you're going to make it. Be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. You don't turn from it. That's why I said to you earlier, if in your mess or in your struggle or whatever you're going through, if you make the wrong choices and you turn from following the Lord, to the right hand or to the left, you're not going to make it. You're not going to prosper the way God has intended for you to prosper. Joshua, don't turn left nor right. You be very courageous. Keep going. Great courage comes. Oh, boy, here's another one. Great courage comes when I read and what? That God is going to do what? Through who? Me? Now, Braden, I know I've been picking on you, son. You need to stay awake. You okay? No, he's awake. He's fine. <laughs> did you think you were going to intercept that ball the other night? I mean, did you start the game the other night thinking you were going to intercept that ball? You did? <laughs> did you think when they handed the ball to you the other night you were going to have some of those good runs? Yeah. You did? Come on, faith, baby. Come on. It's a good lesson for us, isn't it? 
Read and believe that God's going to do great things through who? Why not you? Can you say that? Why not? How about why not me? How about why not? Can we say it loud like we mean it? Why not? Me. One more time. Why not? Why can't I be happy? Why not? I'm sure I can. And I am. Amen. How does great courage come? I do what God says do. I do it just like God said do it. And I do it every day. How about let's try that again, Rog. Take it off the board. How do you get great courage in your life? I do what God says do. I do it just like God says do it. And how often do I do it? See, the difference between a winner and a whiner is a whiner will do it once and go, well, I can't believe it. I did it. I don't understand. And then you quit because you're a quitter. A winner says, I did it yesterday. I'll get up and do it again today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. And even if you're still getting punched in the face, you tell yourself, yep, yeah, but I did it yesterday, and I did it today, and I'm going to do it tomorrow, and as I'm getting punched, I'm getting stronger. And God's with me, and I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to do it again just like he says, and I'm going to do it again today, and then I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Did you hear me or did I drive you up the wall? I'm sorry, it would be nice if we could write a TV preacher and just get courage, wouldn't it? It's not going to happen. I don't care how many handkerchiefs you get from them. It's going to take you doing something. I believe it's going to what? I believe it's going to, I believe it's going to get done, man, in my life. Why not believe like that? I will prosper. I will succeed. Isn't that it it hard words to say when you're hurting? Say Yes or no? I mean, it sounds stupid almost, doesn't it? I will prosper, yeah. I'll succeed, yeah. It's up to you if you want to think like that. Amen? We're talking about courageous faith today. That's what we've been talking about. But this is a real story. Keep looking. We're almost done, I hope. God's promise to a conqueror is reiterated. Have not I commanded you, be strong and of a good courage. Do not be afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you whithersoever you go. He starts doing it. Joshua starts doing it. And to all the people, Joshua said this, Get prepared. We're doing it. You've been waiting 40 years. It's time. Some of you remember when you were five years old, and I told you one day it was going to happen. Now you are 45. And you think I look old, Joshua said? Ain't old, baby. There's a lot of fighting this man left. Get ready, we're going. Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare your victuals for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess it. To those who thought they were going to be taking it easy, he said, ain't what? To you that think in your life you're going to get out of the mess, the struggle, whatever it might be where you're at, and you don't have to do anything, ain't happening. You better get prepared. Come on. You're going with us. We're going to do it how? And I hope that's how you feel on Sunday morning when you come here. That we're here with you. We're here for you. We love you. Amen? Yes or no? Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. We're with you. We're with you. Come on. And to the Reubenites, to the Gadites, to... Tribe of half tribe of Manasseh, he said, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest. He's given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan, but you shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he hath given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God gives them. Then you shall return into the land of your possession and enjoy it. So even though you're on this side and this is your land over here, but there, your other people's land is over on this side, you're going to still help them. You ain't sitting over here doing nothing. Okay? And then you can return and take it easy back in your land. Okay? People respond to what? Leadership. 
And Josh, God's saying, Joshua, you better be strong, and these people are going to respond to you if you have courage. You do what I say, you do it exactly like I say, and you do it every day. And you see if people won't follow you. And they answered Joshua saying, All that thou hast commanded us we will do. Whithersoever thou sendest, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, which was not true, but anyway, so will we hearken unto you. That must have scared him to death when they said that. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Amen? What you say we will do, keep going. Where you sin, we will go. When you speak, we will what? Now, look, look. they didn't do that 40 years earlier, did they? What you say we ain't going to do, where you sin, we sure ain't going. And when you talk, shut up. We ain't hearing a thing you're saying. We're almost done. This is the last verse we're going to do. If you keep faith, listen to me. If you keep faith, you keep believing, you've got to know the tide will turn. You go down and spend some time at the ocean. If you have to stay there all day, from low tide to high tide or from high tide to low tide, I guarantee that if you stay there long enough, the tide will turn. If you stay with God long enough, you believe long enough, the tide will turn in your life. Did you hear me? Forty years ago, they wanted to stone him. That's how we started the message. Forty years later, they said, where you sin, we'll go. What you say, we'll do. And whenever you talk, we're hushing our mouth and we're going to listen. Forty years it took for him to hear that. But he got to hear it. Now look what else he heard. Here's what they said. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against your commandment and will not hearken unto your words and all that you command him, he shall be what? Joshua went from the man being put to death to the man that people around him said, if people don't listen to you, we'll put them to death. Would you call that a tide turning? Say, that's a serious tide turning. That's the message today. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and have a good courage. And be strong and very, very, very courageous in your faith. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. We're out of time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Lord. Good word today.